Lead singer Derek Shulman on not losing his head during his tenure with the band Gentle Giant. And some good news for the fans, a new remix album, Three Piece Suite, remixed by Stephen Wilson of Porcupine Tree fame. I'm John Bowden from rockhistorymusic.com. Even though the legendary prog band broke up 37 years ago in 1980, the interest in the group is actually starting to rise with a few remixes of the older catalog in the last few years, and now Stephen Wilson, as mentioned, of Porcupine Tree fame, grabbing the reins on Three Piece Suite, which is a combination of their first three albums. They released their debut in 1970, the self-titled Gentle Giant album. Then there came Acquiring the Taste the following year, leading up to Three Friends in 1972. They couldn't find all the albums, all the raw data for the tapes, so they came up with this one. There's always been talk in rock and roll that, especially if you're the lead singer or one of the main members of any band, or I should really just say a celebrity of any kind, one can stop, let's say, maturing once you become famous. I asked Eric Shulman how he handled all the attention being the main guy, the main lead singer in Gentle Giant all those years ago. No, you know what? What the one thing that Gentle Giant never did, we took our music very seriously, yeah. really seriously. We never took ourselves very seriously. And that's, that was key to, I, I hope, our legacy, if you like, is that it was, we loved what we did. It wasn't for fame and fortune, it was for music. Again, I'll just say this, that the fact that 37 years later, we're talking about Gentle Giant, 37 years after we closed that door, I think probably was part of the reason why we're talking about it because yes we were we took our music very seriously we love what we did and and it, and it reflects back because we're still discussing it but we didn't add that to well we're, gonna, we're a big band we can play you know we can play uh 10 20 000 seaters and sell out okay we were lucky in that respect that we were able to put our music you know up there and, and fans would pay for us uh to to see us and, and we were able to make a living at it that was that was all we wanted and that's all we needed we don't to get into the sort of celebrity pop star thing was uh, that was probably the downfall in certain respects for my first one that was probably me because i felt uncomfortable in being this pop person and therefore it was it, it stymied me as a person so therefore that's what i wanted i did i wanted to get out of that and be in a, in a group of musicians who wanted the same thing so yes it can it can it can hurt you psychologically. We're talking to former lead singer Derek Shulman of Gentle Giant. All the guys sang in the band, but he sang the bulk of the material. He went on after 1980 to become a record exec. Actually, he discovered, signed Bon Jovi, who are right now leading in the polls for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Looks like they may get in this year. He also brought Tears for Fears into North America. And in later videos, we'll talk about more of his life as a record executive. But this one, remixed by Stephen Wilson, Three Piece Suite. This was not easy to put together because, as mentioned earlier, they couldn't find the raw tapes. Well, it was uh, it was interesting for for all of us. Um, certainly, um, my brother Ray actually and and Stephen, because uh, Ray, in fact, and Kerry Veneer, our keyboard player, were looking for the first three albums, the, the multi tracks, and at, for a long time actually. Um, and all they could find, unfortunately, were the tracks that you see on 3 P Suite. From what I heard of what we understood was that the, the other tracks or the other multi-tracks which were recorded were either trashed, burned, or, or recorded over. So all we had was those tracks from those first three albums back in the day. What we find, found out subsequently, by the way, was a friend of a friend of a friend had actually found the first album and so we, since since we have uh, recorded that we have the multi multi tracks for the first album but not uh, acquiring the taste of three friends so what we found was we all, all we have was like nine or ten tracks um and Stephen, you know we said Stephen, we can't find the you know, three friends we can't find you know, acquiring the taste we can't find find any We've got a couple of tracks of, of Giant, but that's all we can find. So he said, you know what, let's, let's, do, let's just do a box set and, and, as the sort of the birth, if you like, the adolescence of the band, Gentle Giant. So his idea, so he said, let's do it. Okay, good idea. Plus it offered you the opportunity to put things on like Freedom's Child. Correct. Yeah, so we found, exactly, we found out uh, that um, we found that in the archival uh, 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 multi-tracks, as well as a couple of other songs. 
that we had recorded with Tony and our first record, Tony Visconti, that is, that we haven't actually uh, released uh, because they were kind of like transitory songs from my first that first group, which is uh, a group called Simon Dupree and the Big Sound, to, uh, to, to become Gentle Giant. And they were kind of like not quite there, but not quite there, so we just left them off. And in fact, Freedom's Child was one one of those kind of songs but uh so it didn't make the first album but i guess we we thought well you know this it's, it's a nice song uh it was kind of pre gentle giant but post simon dupree the big sound so just for anyone who was interested we threw it in there as well well the simon dupree project i sometimes try to figure out especially reading the line notes which were great is there a point where you went well that's not really it's not me there's nothing wrong with it but it's just not me i want to do something else yeah well, actually, yes, yeah, so the truth is, is that um, in my first group, um, when I was schooling, in fact, I mean, me and Ray were schoolboys, uh, and um, we were, we, we put a band together called Simon Dupree and the Big Sound, toured all over uh, UK and Europe, actually, it became very popular, <laughs> bizarre as it may seem, and we were teenagers, and we had a couple of very big hits. Like Kites in 67? Kites was gigantic, it was yeah. a top 10 record. Uh, for whom the bell tolls, even uh, uh, I See the Light, the very first single, was a top 40 hit. And as, as kids, you know, in England in those days, the mid to late 60s, who, don't, who, do, who doesn't want to be a pop rock star? But ultimately, it became a millstone around our necks, actually, because as we were growing musically, we were kind of bagged into this pop world where you know, the screaming girls and or people, you know, in, in clubs who are eating scanty and chips wanted to hear the hits and it became quite depressing to tell you the truth and we weren't able to kind of we were stymied in the fact that we had those hits uh, around our necks and couldn't move on to something which is different so what ultimately what happened was I, I actually sort of uh, became quite depressed actually to be honest with you and said I can't do this anymore uh, and I want to break the band up and Ray and my, my brother Phil said yes good idea Let's do something else. And thankfully, we had uh, a benefactor who was a manager, uh, a guy called Jerry Braun. Um, and he believed in our musicality, if you like, and said, you know what? Good idea. Why don't you put a new group together and get the musicians you want to do whatever you want, what, do whatever you want it is, whatever it is to do. So he actually subsidized the group for a period of a six to nine months of us reaching out and interviewing people for keyboard position, for the guitar position, for the drum position, and and we became Gentle Giant. And so in that respect, I tip my hat to people like him who are non-existent in this day and age. Back in those days, you had those guys like Chris Blackwell and et cetera, et cetera, who would do these kinds of things and, and, and invested in the musicians and creativity. And in fact, uh, you know, again, I will tip my hat to Jerry because he did give us money. I kept his living, if you like, uh, and um, listen, he did okay from it, and so did we. But the fact is, he believed in our vision, whatever that was, because it was an open-ended vision of becoming better musicians and, and investing in other musicians to join the group. Um, and, um, and in fact, one of his uh, surrogates, uh, a guy called Colin Richardson, named the band. Uh, he, you know, because he heard the music and it was loud and powerful. At the same time, it had sort of soft and, and quiet touches. And I wanted to be, I wanted the group to be called, be called Giant. And that was, a, of course, too expansive for him. So, and, and this guy said, no, gentle Giant. I said, okay, whatever you want. You're the, you're the guy who's paying the bill. So we became Gentle Giant. We'll have more of our chats with Derek Shulman coming up next week. We'll have uh, many more conversations with him talking about not only what he did with Gentle Giant as a lead singer, but also what he did as a record executive, as mentioned earlier, discovering people like Bon Jovi. There's lots of interesting stories from behind the scenes. You can pick up this album right now, Three Piece Suite, a combination of their first three albums, as well as a, a song that was in the vaults since 1970, Freedom's Child. It's a delicious tune. Well worth the album. The whole thing is remixed by Stephen Wilson. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.